Pudge, I'm filming. <laughs> you are so cute. We are back, the headless YouTuber and her trusty pug Pudge, back with another favorites video. I did say that I wasn't gonna do one every month, but I seem to have some favorites that I wanna show you. Let's address one thing before this video starts. Um, I have been getting an increasing number of comments regarding my dog. I've addressed this in another video, but I think this is the last time that I'm gonna address it just because I'm getting sick of it and it's making me almost not want to post him on my YouTube, which I think would make a lot of people sad. So I'm gonna say this with as much kindness as I can. I understand that maybe your concerns come from a good place, but for one, if you have a problem with something like the fact that I own a pug, you do realize that you can approach me like an adult and address your concerns. You don't have to immediately come at me with a jab or an insult or a, oh, how cute that you love dogs that can't breathe or oh, you're such a good mom that you think it's funny that your dog can't breathe. Um, I can take a lot of mean comments about the way I look, the way I take care of my plants, the way I do things, but I do not like people talking about my dog. This is my child. Um, my world revolves around his well-being. I literally live to take care of him. So when someone comes at me and basically accuses me of not caring for Pudge or assuming that I got him from a breeder, not that it's really any of your business, assuming that I haven't done my research on Pugs and don't know the health issues that come with them, um, it's insulting to me. I am well aware of their health issues. We are at the vet like clockwork. Um, we have had his nose looked at. I wanted to make sure he didn't need the surgery to like widen his like nasal passage or whatever. Um, they didn't recommend it because they are starting to breed pugs back to how they were before and I will insert a photo here. They, sorry, I scared him. They um, have longer snouts, they're taller, skinnier they're just more lean they looked very different and I have been seeing a lot more pugs like that around which is great because as you know cute as they are when they're tubby and their face is all wrinkled in it is not good for them I didn't get pudge from a breeder not that I owe anybody an explanation really uh, he is from an accidental litter as I've told people before I have rescued an animal before. I rescued a cat, which is now with my mom, but I don't feel like I need to shove that down everyone's throats. I have nothing to prove. So this is the last time that I'm addressing it. Any other comments talking about Pudge, I'm just deleting. I'm not even gonna reply to you anymore. So that is that. Also, someone had mentioned that my intros are too long. Um, I do agree that I tend to ramble in the beginning, but that's because I do one video a week. I try and make the intro as sort of like housekeeping. I address what's going on with filming, future videos, what's going on with Pudge, going on in my life. So if you're not into it, which is totally fine, feel free to skip forward. Um, I think maybe I'll start putting like a timestamp in the description of when the intro ends. Uh, I know, I know, but some people don't want to hear it and that's fine. So uh, I think that's, a, that's it for my, um, my intro. Sorry to kind of start it off on like a bad note, but I just, you know, I was going through comments today and I, I was having a great day and then I started reading messages and it's just like, it just gets tiring. You know, a lot of people say, why don't you just ignore it? Like it just, why do you even address it? Um, I feel like unless you're in the position where you have a following where you're scrutinized for everything you do in your life and my following is tiny compared to some of the people out there and um, it weighs on you, it really does. It gets hard to ignore when it's like beaten down on you daily. Uh, so yeah, I tend to address it just because I just want to show people that I do read it. I'm just here to tell you like I don't care what you think, I'm not here to impress anyone. I'm not here to please everyone. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that hate me, that don't like me, but don't talk about my dog. <laughs> that's just, that's my only rule. Don't talk about Pudge because he is the greatest thing in my whole life and um, everything I do is for him. So 
Anyway, let's get this video started. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have 15 plants to show you today. I tried to do a good mix of philodendrons, anthuriums, non aeroids, ripsalis. Uh, so hopefully you guys get a taste of all the flavors and let's just get started. You wanna help me grab the plants? Yeah? Okay, you grab the big ones and I'll grab the small ones. Go! I'm gonna start with this one. This is my first favorite for November. This is, I think it's a Skindapsis Silver Hero. I have been told it's not a Silver Hero, that it's a Skindapsis something else. I can't remember the name. I am not a Skindapsis connoisseur. I have probably studied Skindapsis the least out of everything out there. Not because I don't care about it, it's just what it is. But this one was given to me by my friend Jing. You can follow her at Mom and Plants or at her shop, which is planthappens.com. You guys have probably seen in previous videos that I've acclimated for her in the past. Um, this was not one of them. This was a plant that she got from a previous import and she said she didn't like the way it was growing. Uh, not the growth pattern, but all of her leaves were sort of coming out like this, where you could see all the veins coming through. I haven't really had that issue. You can kind of see a little bit coming through on the leaf, uh, the second to oldest leaf, but all the other ones that have grown in my care look pretty silver. And if you guys have seen like a Hestatum silver sword, this is like if a Hestatum were a Skindapsis, in my opinion. I do think that this veining that came through I believe it's a maturity thing for one, like on my anthurium seedlings, all of my really teeny tiny ones have this kind of same look to the leaf where the veins come through, but on some of the larger leaves you can't see it anymore. So I think one, it's a maturity thing, two, might be a nutrient thing. I am feeding this one heavily with LGL and CalMag and Pudge wants to go back to bed. So anyways, this one is definitely one of my favorites so far. I just, I really love the way this leaf looks. It has a beautiful texture to it. It's not super shiny, but it kind of has a very, very fine, almost glitter <laughs> to it. And Pudge is, Pudge. I'm filming, buddy. You can't do that while I'm filming. Here, how about you go in the bedroom? probably gonna come back out here. I tried to walk out of the room very casually, like nothing was happening. Uh, to wrap this one up, there's really nothing much to say about it. I don't think that I'm going to have this one climbing. I I don't know, I've, I've tried the whole like climbing skindapsis thing, the shingling skindapsis thing, but the truth is, is I don't really like the way a lot of the shingling plants look once they've shingled. I don't have a place to keep them long term to shingle. If I owned property, I would maybe have something shingle on a wall because I know I could leave it there despite the damage it would leave. But as a renter, I just it's just not feasible for me right now. It doesn't really make sense. So I think I'm gonna get this one off of a pole. I'm gonna propagate it and try and make like a little <laughs> bushy pot. Are you fine? What happened? Okay, so that's it for that plant. The next one is a Hoya. This one, this one is a Hoya Velosa. I think this one is from Alice. Uh, I, she showed me a picture of it and I already loved it so much, right? But then I got it in person and I was like, oh my stars, it is fuzzy. It's a bit hard to see. Um, the lighting is not the greatest right now. It's kind of overcast now. But this one is just really fun. It's got like that nice sort of dark venation. It's shiny, but it's fuzzy. And the underside is just, I wanna show you without damaging it. 
I can't even tell if that's focused, but you can kind of see the little fuzz on it. It does have new growth on it right here, which I'm super, super happy about. Uh, I think something also might be waking up along this stem. Again, not much to say about this. I have been really loving these kinds of Hoyas lately that have sort of that like reptile texture. It was not something that I was really into before, but I have been influenced by friends and I am definitely a fan now. So I haven't even, I don't think I've shown this one on my Instagram yet. I haven't taken a photo, so maybe I'll wait until the new leaves come out. But otherwise, this one's really fun. I just have this one in Pawn and seems seems happy enough this next one i don't remember the last time i would have shown it on my channel i i'm getting i've filmed so many things now that haven't been posted yet so i'm getting kind of confused but this is my ripsalis trigona no this is my ripsalis paradoxa minor and um i got this one from someone local my friend rain and it just I don't know it's just it's kind of been growing like a dream haven't really had any issues with it it's just in a kind of denser soil this is not my typical aeroid mix but I wanted to get some nice fuzzy roots because it was in I think it was like in straight up cocoa husk when I got it if I can remember correctly but it's taken to soil really well I've got some nice roots down here. This one does dry out really fast. When it gets thirsty, these just become like prunes. They become so shriveled. So the no drainage potting has actually been really great for it. So I would recommend that if you guys have one of these. I'm going to do a follow-up no drainage potting video because I feel like there's been so many more questions that I've been asked over the last few months. So I will address those in that video, but I will try and remember to show you all of the substrates that I have plants growing in. And I feel like, I feel like maybe a third of the plants I'm gonna show you today are growing with no drainage, which reminds me just quick, story time somebody left a comment on my instagram and said that they were kicked out of a succulent and cacti facebook group because she showed a picture of her like cacti or succulent in no drainage like a mason jar so it didn't have drainage they straight up booted her from the group because it said that it was promoting bad growing conditions for cacti and succulents and i am just baffled so if you are one of the admins in that group and you follow me on youtube first off I, I i don't think that they would follow me on youtube because i talk about no drainage potting but if you happen to stumble upon this video and you are one of the admins are you okay <laughs> honestly are you okay uh community gatekeeper much anyway that one got my blood boiling so Sorry to whoever got booted from the group, but honestly, it was a blessing in disguise because you do not need that energy ever in your life. Back to the plant. This one is just, it's amazing. I, if I had the opportunity to own another one of these to add to this pot, oh, I would do it in an absolute heartbeat. Vandula Farms, you guys probably know of Vandula. If you've been on this channel a while. They just got these in. I have a $100 gift card to Vandula from my best friend from my birthday. Say that I won't spend it on another one of these even though I need other stuff more. Um, I was planning to do a big Vandula haul when they reopen in March to get ready for spring. I'm gonna need a lot more soil amendments, pots and fertilizers, stuff like that. But I don't know, I think I might have to just spend it on another one of these bad boys because it really induces a lot of serotonin in me. And I'm just so appreciative that this thing, despite it being the middle of winter, being blasted by grow or being blasted by a heater all day long all night long it's just it doesn't care and that is my hair in it gross does anyone else hate loose hairs or is it just me i just oh i hate hair it doesn't matter whose hair it is it could be mine i'm thoroughly grossed out by my own hair the second it leaves my skull um what else to say about this uh this one is definitely one of my favorites i'm gonna try to not include this in my december favorites but if you guys see it again, do not be surprised. All right, the next. Quiet on set, please. <laughs> he just got done playing with his toy, so he's all hot and bothered now. The next one that I have is a plant I've definitely shown on this channel before, but it would have been much smaller. 
This is a Begonia Maculata Tamaya, and this one started as a, a smaller plant. I got it from my friend Erin, and it dropped so many leaves um, when I first took it home. This stem right here was completely just bare. There was another growth point on it that just completely died, and I think I was down to maybe like four leaves at one point. And now she's back and she's actually growing so beautifully. Like I am just kind of in awe of this <laughs> cascading, this cascading growth pattern on it. And the new leaves coming in are just pristine and immaculate. Not that that's something that we should be striving for. Um, as plant parents, you kind of got to get that like notion that your, your leaves are supposed to be perfect out of your head or else you're never going to be satisfied with your plants. But I mean, I'm gonna call it what it is. Do you see a single flaw on any of these new leaves? There is a new leaf coming in as well, right here. And a new leaf coming in right there. And the substrate that I have it in is pond and perlite. Let me try and take it out of here. Oh, so it's basically mostly perlite and pond and it loves it. It's been in here for a while because I was rehabbing it. The whole like the whole root system rotted and I was honestly ready to kind of just list it on marketplace and say get it out of my house, but I'm glad I didn't give up. It does need to be watered, it's very dry. But otherwise, it's growing like a dream. I had this in soil from the very start. Did not it did not like soil. It seemed to be growing fine in soil at Aaron's house, but I don't know why the second it moved to my house it just hated it and then I moved it to um, I moved it to Lekka did not like Lekka and then that's when I got it into this substrate and this one was living in my Mars Hydro tent for about a month to kind of grow back I gave it that warmth I made sure that I was feeding it regularly and it just took off but I didn't want to grow it in my in my greenhouse because there's other plants that I need to put in there more than something like this. So I took it out, I put it back on my shelf, and luckily there were no issues with that transition. I do think a good part of it was my use of mycorrhizae. The beneficial fungi in mycorrhizae. <laughs> <laughs> the beneficial fungi will kind of strengthen your plant's defenses against fungal issues, bacterial issues, uh, root rot, and it just kind of makes your plants a stronger specimen in general. So I feel like that has something to do with it. Yeah, I can't complain. It's a, it's a beauty. I'm gonna try and get Pudge out of here because the snoring is kind of a lot. I'm sorry, baby. You gotta go to the bedroom. The next one is also a begonia. <laughs> no, stay, stay. He's looking at me like, what are we doing right now? What is this? <laughs> no, stay, buddy. Oh no. Oh, you are so precious, my child. I know, I love you, you're not in trouble. It's just, I'm trying to film something right now. No, you're not in trouble. I'm just trying to film something. Okay, you can come on the couch as long as you try and be a little bit more quiet, okay? Just a little bit. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> the next one is my other Begonia Maculata, but it's YDI. And, um, hello. Guys, I struggled with this plant. I was so tempted to not even give this one away, but to just like chuck it like chuck it into the river. I tried everything in the books to get this one to live for me. And what it took was living in my Mars Hydro tent for like four months. I'm not kidding. This one was a stick. There were like almost no leaves on it anymore. And I stuck it in the Mars Hydro tent and it really, really, really appreciated the warmth and the humidity in there. I think more than humidity, this thing loves warmth. So if you're trying to rehab a begonia, try and up the warmth um, just a little bit and see how it does. This one is also in a no drainage hole pot, just like it down at the bottom with some soil. All that crunching you hear are the like old sort of sheaths that they come out of, this stuff right here. But yeah, otherwise, 
it's just, yeah, it's growing really beautifully. And it even has a second or a third growth point coming out from the bottom now. It is being held up by a stick because it's getting pretty heavy. I did separate a little bit of this out for my mom, so it was actually even bigger. Like there was more coming out this way, but I gave her like half the plant. But yeah, I just, I can't complain. I, I fell out of love with it mostly because of how finicky it was and it just didn't want to grow for me. But I decided to sacrifice that tent space and I don't regret it at all. This has been living out on my shelf now for about a month. So hopefully the new growth continues. These two leaves, these two leaves here grew out on the shelf, so it seems to be doing okay. And I think this one just opened up this week, this little tiny one. This one is a pretty, <laughs> my stomach. I'm actually really hungry. Uh, so this one is a pretty thirsty begonia, in my opinion. The tamaya is also very thirsty. So I am pretty much watering this thing on a schedule. I usually wait until it gets to about this. There is still a teeny tiny bit of moisture down at the bottom, but I'm not gonna let it dry out completely. I am going to cover pretty much all of this leka in water and let it basically bottom water. I pretty much fertilize this the same way that I fertilize all my other plants, which is just a diluted amount of liquid gold leaf, marfil, and uh, calmag pretty much on a weekly basis. There's really never a week that my plants aren't getting fertilized unless they're dormant, but I don't have very many dormant plants right now. To be fully honest with you, everything's kind of still in like spring summer mode. I think because it's so warm in this apartment. But uh, yeah, I'm happy I didn't give up on this one because we're back in love. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sun is blinding me. Ow, it burns. Okay, the last non aeroid that I have is one that Alice brought back for me from, where'd she go? Montreal. And this one is from, I'm gonna butcher the name, so I'm just gonna put the name up on the screen. Um, this is a Rick Rack Cactus. This one actually was like dormant for a long time because it had a lot of rerouting to do, but I noticed, where are you? There you are. New growth, finally. My gosh, this thing, I, I swear I was never gonna get new growth. I was like, this thing is fake. Um, but I'm happy to know it's alive and kicking. And you can see that there is a little bit of algae growth in here. Um, I haven't flushed any of my plants probably since the last time I filmed that video that was about flushing my no drainage hole pots. It's just been a constant game of catch up with me traveling back to California. So honestly, there's really no time for like the extra stuff. I'm just really doing the bare minimum right now, which is watering and fertilizing my plants and checking for um, pests. But you can see this part that is exposed to most of the sunlight in my bedroom because this is sitting on a shelf that is about, I wanna say, hmm, maybe like 10, 10 or 15 feet away from a window, from a southeast facing window. There is a lot more algae buildup on the vessel compared to the back that's not getting as much exposure to sunlight. So that's just kind of a fun fact when you're potting with vessels that are clear. Um, if you want to avoid that, not prevent it, but just kind of slow it down, you can watch that video and take some notes on things that I do to prevent it. But honestly, I don't mind algae. Pretty much all of my vessels that are no drainage pots have algae and I only really address it or give it a full clean when it's really, really bad. But at this stage, I'm literally not worried about it at all. But otherwise, this one is like really fun. I know it kind of has a crazy sort of growth pattern, but plants like this are a great statement piece for like a big wall or if you're decorating a wall that isn't gonna be just completely filled with plants, but like if you're gonna style it with frames or books or whatever, um, something like this is just sort of a piece on its own. So I like having stuff like this around because I have this on one shelf that's really big, but because it's so wide and it's just kind of all over the place, it's like enough that I don't feel like I need to put another plant next to it to make it look more full. I just have a frame and then this and then a teeny tiny little um, like vase, just a decorative vase. And yeah, nobody asked about my home styling tips, but there you go. 
Okay, so we are gonna move into the anthuriums. I have three anthuriums to show you and then I'm going to take a lunch break because I'm starving. It is almost 1.30 and I've only had coffee today. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is my anthurium forgetii. <sighs> I got this one from my friend Jing as well. It did drop quite a few leaves when I got it, but it seems to have stabilized. I do have this one back in my greenhouse. It was living on my shelf before I went to California, but I wanted to baby it while I was away. And um, this leaf started partially growing on the shelf and then I moved it into the EXO. It had a tiny bit of trouble getting out of the catafil, which is why it has all these marks on the leaves but otherwise it's a healthy looking leaf. I think it's fully hardened off now. It's about, it's a little bit bigger than the leaf that came before it, so it's beefing up quite a bit. But I'm just, I'm really happy with this one because my really big, dark forgetii kind of took it and um, it, it has come back and I might show it in this video maybe if I can remember. But I was really sad because after it kind of just turned into a stump, I didn't have a forgetii anymore. And then my friend Jing let me buy this one. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I think it's really beautiful. I do think it might be getting a little bit too much light because the leaves are so kind of like this light green color. I think that after this next trip to California, I'm going to put this back on my shelf, reacclimate it down to 35% humidity, and hopefully we can get some darker leaves on it because I'm not loving this light green color that it is. And I think it's partially because it is under a very strong light in my EXO. This one is majorly overdue for a potting. It's so funny how this like stem is so long and all these roots are coming out of the top. Down here, you'll see how like sort of mucky it looks. This is all uh, mycorrhizae. This is not, that's not algae. There is a, a bit of algae, but that's this green stuff here. So I think I might do a repot of this one in an upcoming video. I am going to keep it in this same substrate. So I'm just gonna do coarse perlite and LECA or I might do coarse perlite and pawn and maybe a little bit of slow release fertilizer. But yeah, look how cute it is. It's adorbs. But yeah, overall this one's been really fun to grow. Uh, hasn't been as finicky as my other forgetty eyes, the forgetty eye silver, silver stripe or Forgetty Eye Silver, whatever this is called. Um, my other one that I imported back in May is almost down to a stump. It has much, much darker leaves than this one. And maybe I'll just show you. Let me go grab them really quick, just for the sake of comparison. All right, I have some Forgetty Eyes here. This one is my Forgetty Eye Dark Form. I'm not really sure why the names are being interchanged with these two different forgetty eyes, they're obviously very different. One has this dark neon venation, one has silver. I'm being told that this one is dark form. <laughs> I don't know, somebody chime in in the comments, but to my knowledge, this is dark form because it is dark and it has no silver venation. But um, this one used to be a really, really big plant. I'll put the photo next to me and it was like my pride and joy, but I can't remember why it just died all of a sudden. It was doing really well. It pushed out this massive, massive leaf. And then it was just like, and now I'm done. And then it just died. So I did keep the chunk. I have two pieces of it. This is one part of it. The main chunk, the bigger part has not pushed out any growth yet. But I did get a little teeny tiny chunk to come out. Um, I'm glad that I cleaned this one up because there was a little bit of uh, rot on the stem. I don't think that that's why it died because the rot was so little, but I got it nice and clean. Yeah, she came back. This was another one of my rehab forgetty eyes. I just, I honestly cannot even believe that I have a leaf on it. I think I posted the story of this little guy on my Instagram one day, but it just, it went through hell and back and I didn't really think that it had a chance, but here we are months and months and months later. She's really, really rooty. Uh, there is another growth point that looks like it is woken up. This leaf has held on much longer than the leaves that have come before it. So I have hope that she's like fully sort of comfortable now in the space she's in. I do have her in my Millsbow. So yeah, this one, I don't know. I feel like they look 
different, but it could be a maturity thing. This one's definitely darker. I grew it in much lower conditions. It's growing in about under a 10 watt grow light, um, whereas this one's growing under 24 watt grow light. So there is quite a, a color difference. Here is my saddest looking for Getty Eye. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's all I have to say. I don't know. But this little growth point has popped out of the little sheath. So I think something is happening. This one is in just moss and pawn. This one is in straight up perlite. The other one is in moss. So I've kind of got them all growing in different substrates. I like to do that with sort of the same plants to see who likes what better. So I guess I will just keep sort of documenting um, the growth of them. The next two are pendant leaf anthuriums. The first one is an anthurium vitarifolium. I swear my house is like a farm of vitarifoliums and I'm not even slightly mad about it. I started with this leaf here and if you guys have ever grown vitarifoliums from seeds or from a chunk, you will know that they usually start off like this. Sometimes they're even shorter and rounder, like they just look like a little round thing and they're so cute. But as they mature, they slender out. And then the next one that came out was this one. So it definitely slimmed down a lot. And then came this one. And then this one. And then finally this one. I am so pleased so 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 pleased with this leaf i honestly didn't even notice it growing it was in the very very back of an exo it was covered by everything and i didn't even know it was back there and it's just like this long beautiful strappy thing it feels nice and velvety and i think it's still hardening off i really shouldn't be touching this but i'm here and i'm touching it uh this one is growing inside of my exo it's about 70 75 percent humidity there at all times and they're growing way better than my vitar foliums that are out here um, in the living room the ones in my living room require a bit more of babying and i might do a whole youtube video on it, it might be one of like my shorter youtube videos but i do have a highlight in my uh on my instagram and you can kind of see how I baby some of, it, some of my vitarifoliums out on the shelf. But yeah, the vitarifoliums that I've all grown in my exos, they just, they grow really well. They don't require um, much besides the humidity that's already in the greenhouse. I am feeding this one heavily with liquid gold leaf and CalMag as well. I feel like feeding it CalMag during the emergence of a new leaf is very critical in making sure that you get leaves that are not like warped and wonky and, um, and yeah. So this one is actually even pushing out a secondary growth point down at the base. Can you see it? Yeah, oh, right there, right there. Look at these fuzzy, delicious roots. Oh my gosh. And this one can definitely be potted up or I can just kind of top it up with moss and cover all of this with moss so that those can get nice and rooty too. But this one is just in soil and she's happy. She is one happy plant. No complaints. I love this guy. This, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and grow this one in my XO for as long as possible. Just because I love, I just love the way it's growing so far and I would love to see what the next leaf looks like. Which at the rate that this is going, it probably won't be long now. Although I do think I see an inflow coming in, which wouldn't be the worst thing. I would love to collect vitarifolium pollen. But anyway, now I'm rambling. So yeah, my vitarifolium, one of my favorites right now. The last anthurium before lunch. <sighs> my anthurium polytiflorum. She is beautiful. Um, this one is the newest leaf to come out. It's gaining some size. It's been a very slow grower for me uh, in terms of like, I guess, beefing up the, the leaf size or the strap size. The oldest one is this leaf here. And then it was this leaf. Then came these three. And they're all about the same size. And so it wasn't until this last leaf that I kind of saw sort of a noticeable size difference with them. 
Honestly, there isn't a huge, huge difference with the way that a Vitarifolium and a Politiflorum feel. I feel like as they mature, they definitely lose some of this velvetiness because my more mature Vitarifoliums are a bit more matte and smooth, whereas this juvenile one is really, really um, soft and velvety and almost feels exactly like a Politiflorum. But it's nice because even with uh, Politiflorum is maturing, it still keeps that like velvety touch to it and um, and yeah, so this one does have another leaf coming and it kind of looks like it's going to be a big one just in terms of how big this, this caterpillar is in comparison to the way it looked before. You can see here that it's gaining size in the actual stem. So. Hopefully we see some mature ones. Um, I think Alice has a politiflorum that just pushed out this monster of a leaf. Uh, I will see if she'll send me a photo of it so I can insert it in this video. But otherwise, I feel like mine is well on its way to, to getting there. This one is also just in soil. And these pots are my new favorite. Jing was selling these. I think she was selling them in her shop. I think she might be sold out now, but I believe she's restocking some um, in this size and then a smaller size. And I will tag her in this video if you want her to send you some. Pester her and tell her I sent you. She'll know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> and sorry, Jing, but they're great pots. The people need them. Anywho, those are all of the Ethereums I'm gonna show you today. I'm going to get something in my belly because I'm feeling a little bit frazzled and frantic. I don't know if you guys could tell by my voice. I'm kind of talking like a mile a minute and I just, I need to like slow my brain down. So I'm gonna go eat and we're gonna take an ad break so I can feed my dog and then I'll be right back. So we are moving on to the, <laughs> we're moving on to mostly philodendrons here. Uh, there's one non-philodendron that I'll do at the very end. So, uh, where do I start? Which one should I start with? Oh my gosh, they're all so beautiful. The first one that I have here is a philodendron Melanochrysum. This one was an import back in the summer, I think. Ah, punch. It's not time for belly rubs, but after I will give you the best belly rub ever. Deal? 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 You're supposed to handshake. Deal? Deal. So the new leaves that came after it were not as big because that tends to happen after you import. The newest leaf that was emerging when I imported this was rotted, so it kind of reverted back to a smaller size, which was this here. Okay, the sun is blinding and there's so much shadow, so I'm gonna try and go this way but it is kind of showing you the nice sort of glitter that this plant has. Uh, but anyway, it's growing and it is starting to gain size again. The leaves are maybe about three quarters the size of what it was before. Unfortunately, it has run out of pull. I don't know if I'm going to extend this or try to get it on a totally new pole. The only thing is that it's living in very high humidity and there are aerial roots everywhere. So I don't know, I don't know, really know what the game plan is with this plant, but I do know I'm going to need to extend it fast because it is literally at the very top and it has no more space to grow. But um, yeah, look how like sparkly and glittery this one is. I feel like I don't show Milanos that often on, on my channel and I don't know why because they continue to be one of my favorite, favorite philodendrons of all time. I love anything hybridized with Milano. I love Milano in all stages of growth and I just find them to be really beautiful. I am trying to grow this one as big as possible. I have put it in my Mars Hydro tent before, but oddly it it didn't really do anything in there. So I stuck it in the XO and now all of a sudden I've got a new leaf coming. You can see right here. But yeah, Milanos are really fun. I wouldn't say that they're like easy to grow per se. Uh, I actually find them to be harder than hybrids, like harder than a Splendid or harder than a, a Glorious, but it's not difficult. It's just not as easy as hybrids, I feel. So anyway, this is a Milano. Sorry, I couldn't get like a far away shot of it, but doing the best I can here. 
The next one is a, let's go with all of the hybrids that I have that are Milano hybrids. Oh, this light, I can't see. I'm literally seeing spots. The sun is setting now. It's probably gonna be too dark now, but I literally could not see anything. So I was just talking about a Splendid. This is a cross between a Vericosum and a Milano Chrysum. And I, this one was kind of a pain in the butt for a long time. It started as a really big plant, not like big itself, but like the leaf was big and it was a top cutting, but it just like did not like me for a while. But now I feel like it's starting to stabilize. I just wish that I didn't have to grow it in a greenhouse. I really wanted to be able to grow this on my shelf, but that wasn't happening. And then this one is growing in a mixture of my friend Jing's DIY pond and a lot of coarse leca or a lot of coarse perlite and it's doing all right I have tried almost every substrate with this. I've tried Purely leca purely soil purely perlite it nothing it did not like any of it So now I feel like it's finally getting its groove and it's got a new leaf coming I really love how red these leaves look. They look just like a varicosum when they come out or just like a majestic. Um, so I feel like this plant got sort of the best traits of both parents. I mean, it's looking like a real plant now. I was really worried that I wasn't gonna have a splendid there for a while, but she made it. Look at my buddy, so cute. The next hybrid that I have here is a Philodendron Glorious. This is a hybrid of a Gloriosum and a Milano Chrysum. And uh, this one has been like the love of my life for a while. I feel like I say that about all my plants, but I swear I mean it. This was a birthday gift from Alice and it's just been, ugh, she's been a joy to have. I will say that the leaves have not beefed up as much as I'd like it to. This one has been living in my Mars Hydro tent. It was completely dormant in my Mars Hydro tent. It put out one leaf in there, which was this one, and then it stopped growing. And then the second I stuck it into my EXO, it pushed out this guy, which doesn't look like it's gonna be huge. I do think it's gonna be about the same size as the rest of them. I still have a little bit of pole to work with, but it's gonna need an extension soon. This one is living in soil and badly needs a repot, which is why I have this cover pot over it because it was coming out of the bottom. And I think the next step for this one is gonna be to air layer it at every node here to kind of beef it up even more. But otherwise, it's still growing really well. This one has been really hardy. It's been through a lot. Let me see if I can move the cam camera back. Oh, that's better. So this is her. She's beautiful. She feels just like a Milano. It looks pretty much like a Gloriosum, dressed with less, I guess, uh, prominent venation and a more elongated leaf. It has like the leaf shape of a Milano, but it has the leaf color of a Gloriosum. It's got the pink back like a Gloriosum and also the petioles pretty much of a Gloriosum. You're snoring, babe. You're snoring. About you. I two other videos today. Since I was talking about Gloriosum, let's show you Gloriosum. And it's not the Gloriosum you're thinking about. Trust me, it took everything in me to not include that in today's video because it is looking amazing. This is a different Gloriosum. Got it. I don't remember if I've shown this on my channel. I probably have, but it was much smaller. This one is a Philodendron Gloriosum something something don't know which form it is it's got really really bright veins i i don't know what it is you know it's funny because the, the petioles are really orange and pink uh this one doesn't emerge very pink like my other gloriosums do but yeah this is the newest one that just came out it got stuck on another plant so it ripped a little bit but this one has held on to almost all the leaves. I do think this one was the original leaf on it. So it's still holding on strong. Look at how badly this needs to be repotted. It's bad. But it seems to not mind living in a swamp. 
I don't recommend that, but I mean, it's doing just fine. I would love to know what form this is because I feel like she took cuttings of this plant and gave it to like all of us. And I feel like all of ours look kind of different. And her mother plant even puts out different leaves. I mean, same plant, but they all look different. Uh, so I don't know if it's growing conditions or what or if it's just totally random, but yeah, this one is definitely unlike any Gloriosum that I've ever owned or that I've ever seen. I have seen some that are similar to hers, but not exactly the same. And I'll see if I can plug in a photo. But anyway, yeah, I really like this one. Um, this one is also living in my EXO. It's not ideal for me to be having Gloriosums living in my greenhouses because of the limited space, but just for how well that they've been growing, it's hard for me to take them out. I know it's just a matter of time before they're gonna outgrow it, but I really am like milking it for as long as I can. But look how pretty that is. It's delicious. And I really can't explain it. Like honestly, the petioles are just such a different color than all my other Gloriosums. Like it literally looks like the color of a Billetier. It's like orange and pink. I don't get it. I have two more. Another plant from Alice. This is a philodendron Florida ghost. I just... Look at it. <laughs> I mean, I know this is not great. We don't want all white leaves, right? But honestly, I don't... I don't know. They're beautiful. I'm just enjoying it for as long as I can until they inevitably turn brown and die on me. I think I'm particularly loving it because I did own a Florida ghost before. I think that was one of my first imported plants ever and I was so happy to have it but it never gave me any variegation. Uh, the bottom leaves did have variegation already but none of the new leaves ever gave me variegation. I tried chopping it back, I tried changing the growing conditions but it gave me nothing so I ended up selling it because just I don't know it was kind of taking up space it was getting kind of big and then Alice just she took this propagation from her mother plant and Geez Louise, like it definitely delivered. I am hoping that some green kind of comes back on this plant eventually. Um, I'm not working with a ton of stems, so I don't want to chop it right away. But how fun are these petioles? Like they're like a bright pink and a little bit of an orange color. And then these leaves are like a creamy white. Oh, I love it. I tried photographing this for Instagram, but it was like impossible. I couldn't get it. It's just too hard to do like white on a white background. And then when I would do this against like a, a background that was a little bit more busy, it still wasn't like focusing and it was just difficult. So I haven't been able to photograph this one, but at least I can show it here and it's unfiltered and this is exactly what it looks like. So thank you, Alice, for this. I love it very, very much. The last one I've definitely showed, and I think I've definitely showed it in a favorites video, but here we are again. <sighs> My philodendron burly marks variegated. This is wild, and it's growing like crazy. It looks like this leaf is like mostly this green color, and there are one, okay, I'm not gonna count. There's probably like 10 growth points on the base of this, so this thing is gonna get really, really big, which I am stoked about. This is the newest leaf that just unfurled, and I'm loving this variegation. Of course, I love sectoral variegation. This one has a ton of sectoral variegation, and then you've got these that are like mostly this yellow color, but I do have faith that a lot of the ones that are shooting out of the base here are going to give me some green. It did push out one all green leaf, which I chopped off because, I don't know, just didn't want it on there. But otherwise, this one is just growing so easily. I will say that this is probably the easiest plant in my collection by far. Um, it's the one that gives me the most growth with the little amount of care and just can't complain. It's still in the wine glass that Erin gave it to me in. It's in pond, it's got lots of algae. Uh, the brown stuff is probably mycorrhizae or I don't know what it is, but I gotta get this one out before it gets too root bound. I am gonna keep growing this one in Passive Hydro. Yeah, I think that it's really, really loving the pond life. So I definitely want to continue growing it in pond. I just wanna get it in something bigger because these roots are wild. I know you can't really see it. It's kind of cloudy, but yeah. 
This is proof that if your vessel isn't 100% clean, it, it's gonna grow fine. Like honestly, the, it, they're gonna be okay. Anywho, I had to include this just because it looks stunning right now. Like jaw droppingly stunning. If you've been wanting to add a variegated plant to your collection, I highly, highly recommend this one. Not only because of how easy it is to grow, but because the growth pattern is so crazy, it just pushes out growth wherever it possibly can. And it's really easy to share this plant. There are one, two, three, four growth po separate growth points on this plant. So I could easily just chop it and share it with a friend. Very easy to root. I recommend getting this one. I don't know what the market price of these are right now. I haven't really checked or looked for a long time, but it's not gonna run you anywhere near a philodendron billetier. I know it's not the same plant at all, but it checks that box for me. All right, the sun is setting. Let's finish this video. Sorry for the noise, you guys, if you have made it this far. With all of Pudge's sounds in the background, I love you so much. Um, this next one I've been wanting to show you for a while now. I was just waiting and waiting and waiting until it looked exactly the way it looks now. So here we go. This is a Monstera elbow that was cut from a mother plant, three leaf cutting. This situation is cray cray. So let me kind of walk you through this. This was originally just in this vessel. I just have it in some moss and you can see that it's, oh, I'm getting slapped by the leaves here. You can see that it's growing really well. It loves it in here. But because it was living in my exo, the aerial roots were also rooting to the walls of my exo. So I figured I want to just root those too. So I just got a cup a plastic cup, I sliced open one end and I just fit it around the, the aerial root. And now we've got roots in here too. And I'm gonna try and show you this without hitting my camera. You can kind of see the roots are going wild, like everywhere, it's wrapping around the rock. This root right here is gonna wrap around this stem. So I think that this one is gonna need to be repot soon. I don't, I was originally going to chop it like right here. Sorry, I keep moving, the, it's really heavy. The plan for this one originally was to chop it here, chop this top off and then it would already be rooted, but it kind of looks really cute like this. So I think I'm gonna leave it and just repot it into something a little bit taller, maybe about here so that I can just put it all in the same vessel, uh, but we'll see how that works out. I will likely do um, the repotting of this on video so that I can show you guys how I did it and kind of walk you through the process if you're interested. But yeah, I'm, I, I do think elbows are beautiful, but seriously, nothing beats a regular Monstera for me. I will take a non-variegated Monstera over an elbow or a tie any day of the week, but you can't deny that this is really beautiful. This plant has amazing genetics. I've cut it multiple times. All the cuttings that I've sold or um, given away, they've all done the marbled, half moon, marbled, half moon uh, thing like the mother plant does. This one is probably the only one that doesn't have the half moon leaf on it, but um, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, this is the last plant I want to show you. Um, you will definitely see this plant again in a separate video when I repot it. But I just wanted to include it because it is growing really well. Oh, and also there is a growth point popping out and I give it probably two weeks before there's a leaf. Two and a half weeks, we'll see. Before I end this video, this last part is gonna be super random, but every week, at least once a week, I go through comments and I try and like write down comments that are the most frequently asked so that I can either address it in a video or make a video about it or whatever. Um, but something that I noticed through Instagram and YouTube are that people were asking about my skincare routine. <laughs> I don't really have a super rigorous skincare routine. I will say that like, I think a lot of 
my skin comes from genetics like my mom and my grandma both have amazing skin i didn't really have acne growing up as a teenager i didn't get um acne until i hit I want to say 23. I think from 23 to 27 was when my acne was the worst. But I think a lot of that had to do with stress. I was under a lot of stress during those times. And, um, you know, I was going through a bad breakup. I was moving back home. I was trying to start a business. I was planning a wedding. Yeah, there was a lot going on in my life at the time. So I think a lot of it was um, stress induced but otherwise I haven't really had a lot of problems with my skin but I wanted to show you the stuff that I use so I mean they are my favorites I just want to show you the products that I'm using right now because it's helped a lot with I will say my complexion and like the texture of my skin I used to get these really really teeny tiny 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 little bumps on my forehead that you could only see like under certain light and it's completely just gone away now um, I, I feel I feel like my skin now is the best it's ever looked. If you um, are not interested in this part, obviously, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next one. But if you want to stick around and see what I use for my face, I'm going to include this in my favorites too because they are my favorite. And I think that this, these are going to be things that I'm using basically religiously through the rest of my 30s at least my 30s i should preface this part by saying i am not affiliated with this company i am not sponsored by them i'm not getting paid to tell you guys this i literally am just re replying to the few people that have all wanted to know what i use so uh everything that i use honestly is from the ordinary and the ordinary is a great brand it's like seriously so cheap all their products are super cheap in comparison to stuff that i used to buy and i can't use some of the like over-the-counter stuff that you can get from like i was gonna say claritin <laughs> what is that brand Cl clean and clear um aveeno i just my face reacts really badly to it i was very nervous to use these products but there has not been a single product that my skin has hated so i feel like I, I finally have the things that work really well for me the only thing that i'm missing is something for my under eye which i'm working on right now and i will update you guys if you want to know later what i find so the first thing i use is a cleanser this is the ordinary squalene cleanser it's also a makeup remover i don't wear a ton of makeup but it is good for when you are wearing makeup the way this works is not like a normal cleanser where like you wet your face and you get it nice and sudsy 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 this one you put on to a dry face and it kind of turns into like this oil and you just rub it into your face you can rub it onto your eyes and take off your makeup and then you wash it off with water and it kind of leaves your face feeling like really dewy and and moisturized it's not very drying so i love 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 this stuff i'm not going to tell you guys all of the ingredients that are in here but i'm going to try and remember to link all of these um, in the description if you're interested so that's the cleanser that i use morning and night and then at night time night time only i will use this toner it's a glycolic acid seven percent toning solution um, you can see that i have gone through a good amount of this bottle i love this stuff it is amazing but in the morning i don't actually use a toner because my face is really dry in the morning so just using a moisturizer or doing a cleanser and a moisturizer is pretty much all i need in the morning but i'll do this every single night right after i wash my face here are the serums that i'm using one is hyaluronic acid two percent with b5 this one is called Buffet and it's a multi-technology peptide serum. And then this one is um, the retinol 0.2% and squalene. I do plan on switching to retinoid once this is all done, but honestly, I haven't had any problems with this. So I'm going to start with these two. I switch back and forth between these two every other day in the morning. So one morning I'll do cleanser, um, the hyaluronic acid and then my face cream and then the next day I'll do face wash this face cream and then at night two times a week I'll use my retinol and um, I was very nervous to use this at first because I had never used a retinol before in my life but honestly I feel like this has been such a Shh. Shh. 
<laughs> I feel like this has been such a game changer for my um, skincare routine. So yeah, twice a day, is, twice a day, do not use this twice a day. Twice a week is what I'm doing right now. Once I switch to retinoid, I'll be able to use it more, but for my skin, I'm only using this twice. I was gonna try and amp it up to three times a week, but I've been a little bit too nervous, so I haven't done that yet. And then I have this powder. It's 100% L-ascorbic L acid powder, which is basically like a vitamin C powder, I think. And it just comes like this. And what I do is I just mix, it comes with this little spoon. I just mix a small spoonful into my moisturizer three times a week at night only and this is the moisturizer that I use. I think this, this came in a pack, um, but this one is the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus Surface Hydration Formula and this is probably the best moisturizer I have ever used. Um, before this, I was using Cetaphil, which is great too because I get eczema, but overall, this one is just amazing. I think this is my forever moisturizer. And so the combination of all of these things together, plus drinking tons of water every day, has changed my face. So that's that. I know that was super random, but I just wanted to throw that in there because it was a question that was asked. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Pudge, do you wanna say bye? Come here. It's time to say bye to your friends. Oh, little puppy. This lighting is beautiful. All right, so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing of some of the favorites that I have right now. Keep in mind that I didn't get to include all of the plants that I wanted to include in my favorites because I am filming a separate video which is all of the new plants that I've acquired over the last few weeks. So that one is gonna be an exciting one to film and some of them are definitely my favorites right now. So yeah, uh, keep your eyes peeled for that video but we are gonna get out of here because I actually have another video to film tonight. As always, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments, your thumbs up, your thumbs down. Um, thank you to everybody that tunes in with me during premieres and chats with me. Uh, thank you for everyone that has found me here and has followed me on Instagram as well. I appreciate all of you guys, all of your views are helping me so much this year with Christmas shopping and feeding my child because prices of dog food has gone up. So yeah, I just appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're almost at 5K. I think we can hit it by January, hopefully, or maybe by the end of December. We will see. That would be a nice Christmas gift. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We are going to get out of here and... Yes, that's what I was going to say. Have a nice life. <laughs> Bye.